Best practices for developing an accessible theme. If you watch the lesson, what is accessibility and why it's important, you know that digital accessibility is a broad term that means ensuring that as many people as possible can use the web. There are legal and business implications, but more importantly, accessibility guidelines guarantee a better browsing experience for everyone. The easiest way to deliver accessible themes, plugins or sites is to think about it from the outset. Include it in the planning phase and educate coworkers and clients. That way you won't only spot the errors early on, you'll actually prevent many. In this lesson you'll learn about the fundamentals of accessible HTML and how to apply them to your WordPress themes. HTML is as powerful as it is accessible. Try it yourself. Open your code editor and create a valid HTML page, marked properly with landmarks, headings, text, buttons, links, forms, etc. Now, run the code through an online accessibility checker, like Web Accessibility Checker, and notice how it detects zero accessibility issues. The problems typically come later as you add styles, scripts, or media assets. As a developer of modern WordPress themes, these are exactly the technologies you'll work with. React-based blocks, PHP patterns, and CSS compiled from theme.json. The key is to be mindful of accessibility while you design and code. Use semantic HTML. Instead of just wrapping everything with a div element, take advantage of the semantically meaningful elements of HTML. It'll save you from hacks designed to reinvent the wheel as a rectangle. Landmarks are a way to define the structure of a page. They help screen readers navigate the content more easily. For example, instead of just defining a bunch of divs with classes, you can use landmarks for relevant sections. If you're designing or building your theme inside the site editor, it's also possible to set landmarks there. To define group row and stack blocks as content sectioning elements, select the block, open the block settings, and click on the advanced dropdown. Scroll down and set the HTML element to one of either header, main, section, article aside or footer, according to the block's functionality and position. When adding headings to templates, always use headings in the right order, starting from H2 and continuing in a descending sequence up to H6. In the site editor, click on the document overview outline to check whether you've skipped a level or if everything is correctly set. When designing user actions, consider the following as it relates to using buttons or links. If you want visitors to perform an action, use a button element. When you want them to navigate to another page, use the anchor element or the A tag. If the link should resemble a button, say for a call to action on a landing page, then style it with CSS. If you're designing any forms in your theme, then follow these guidelines. Always wrap the form in a form element. On input fields, always set the appropriate type and matching attributes. For example, defining an input type of tell will display a numeric keypad on mobile devices. Don't rely on placeholder text to indicate to the user what the input field is for. Always provide accessible labels. Use the search element for any search forms. When designing login forms, you can use the autocomplete attribute to help password managers fill in the form. By default, most browsers will display a focus ring on elements if the element has focus. If you want to change the display of these focus rings, use the focus visible pseudo class and don't remove focus rings entirely. Be sure to create an accessible color palette with sufficient contrast. When editing templates, WordPress alerts you when the text and background color combination you set fails to do that. Don't use color alone to convey information. Links, for example, should be marked by more than color. And the same goes for focus states. When in doubt, look at the default HTML link and focus styles and follow those. 
consider the following when working with typography. Set proper font sizes using relative units like REM. Try to avoid using pixels. Limit the content width to between 50 and 70 characters. The character unit or CH is perfect for that. And finally, make sure to use adequate line spacing for text based on the font size. Respect user preferences. Media queries help create a better user experience. Some media query types, like prefers color scheme or prefers reduce motion, are explicitly accessibility driven. But there's also pointer, hover, or scripting that adjust components' behavior to the user's device. The ARIA workaround. ARIA is short for Accessible Rich Internet Applications Framework, and it's often cited as a quick way to make HTML content more accessible to screen readers. However, the most important rule of ARIA is that you should only use it when you absolutely need to. Ideally, you should always use the HTML features to provide the semantics required by screen readers to tell users what's going on. Misused ARIA attributes make things less accessible, so avoid them unless you don't have control over the HTML or you need to handle dynamically generated content. For more information on this, make sure to visit MDN's ARIA basics section. Accessibility is forever a work in progress. Even one small improvement can make a big difference to your site visitors, and it has zero negative effects. It will never make their experience worse. To learn more, visit the W3C Web Accessibility Initiative's WAI tutorials at w3.org slash WAI slash tutorials.